recordings. So I'll talk about acute recordings with NeuroPixels probes and uh, slides have been contributed by Julie Faber, Carolina Socha and Celia Bimbart from the Carolina Harris lab. Um, so because we have a whole topic about chronic NeuroPixels tomorrow, I wanted to first um, discuss when we should do acute recordings uh, instead of chronic or vice versa. So one example when you want to do acute recordings is when you do brain-wide mapping like the IBL has been doing, for example. Uh, because you have uh, more insertions in the same craniotomy and therefore you can, in the same mouse, faster acquire a, a larger area of data. Um, you have also larger insertion angles, so you can go from weirder angles usually than when you use a chronic neuropixel setup. You can record with many probes at the same time, time uh, and with chronic you can usually record maximally two probes at the same time. Um, it only works though if you can record enough trials per recording. So if you have a complex behavior and it's likely that your mouse might perform five to 10 trials, you might not want to do re acute recordings because you will just not have enough power. Instead, you might want to do chronic recordings. Um, acute recordings typically are easier to combine with optical techniques unless you can chronically implant these optical techniques as well. And um, acute only works if a limited number of days is enough to record because the cr craniotomy might get a bit worse over time. Uh, it only works if you want to do head fixed uh, recordings, whereas with chronic you can do either freely moving or head fixed. And if you want to do a snapshot in time rather than record uh, for multiple time steps, for example, over learning, you cannot do that with acute recordings from the same neurons uh, or even in the same mouse is tricky. Uh, I'm just going to go through the experimental pipeline that uh, I'm using in the lab. Uh, so I'll go through it step by step. Uh, just to mention that many of these things have been discussed in previous UCL uh, NeuroPixels courses. So feel free to look at these older presentations as well. They're all online. Um, so first is that you want to head fix the mouse. So you need to do a head fix uh, surgery, which means you're installing a head plate or a head bar on the skull of the mouse. We usually combine this with a clear skull surgery as well. So we basically put UV cement on the skull uh, so that we can keep it uh, visible throughout the entire time we're training and doing recordings from a mouse. We like to use the uh, UV curing cement because it's also easy to peel this one off once you start doing the craniotomy. Whereas the adhesive raisin cement is a bit more sticky and harder to peel off. You really have to drill it out. Uh, something to consider is what type of head plate you want to use. Um, we really like the head plate designed by Pip Cohen in the lab, which is uh, kind of a well with slightly tilted angles, quite high edge, uh, edges, and uh, which allows the neuropixel to go in quite smoothly, but the mouse cannot really touch it because of these higher edges. And on top of that, we can close it off with a plastic lid, which is great, so the mouse cannot actually scratch or uh, you know reach the skull. Uh, something else to keep in mind is where you want to position once you have a craniotomy. So it's very important because it's well habituated to the setup or even trained before you do the craniotomy. So here, if the mouse is in my case, it needs to run. If it's not running a lot, don't do a craniotomy because you will not get the data you need. Um, we have had a whole lecture on trajectory planning or tree even. So I'm not going into that too much. I just wanted to mention that you really have to consider practical as much as theoretical trajectories. Uh, you wouldn't be the first person to come up with a very cool trajectory and to find out on the day that you want to do your recording that it actually doesn't fit because you have three screens around your mouse. So uh, make sure you practice your trajectories um, before you do a craniotomy and have a mouse. Uh, we like to uh, mark on during the uh, head fix surgery, we want to mark where Bregma and Lambda are and also where our future screens future craniotomies are going to be, uh, because once the clear skull cap is going to be on, sometimes it gets a bit less visible and it's good to have it marked already. When you're ready for the actual craniotomy, we typically do this three hours to a day before the first recording. Um, you wanna do a cranio craniotomy as small as possible uh, for the probe you wanna insert. So in this case, we wanna insert only one shank, one neuropixel shank in the craniotomy so a small one millimeter craniotomy is more than enough. However, if you need more uh, shanks or more probes or even more shanks from the same probe in uh, a craniotomy, you might want to choose a slightly larger one. 
uh, up to two or maybe even three uh, millimeter. We really like, like to use biopsy pens because they're nice and circular. So you can uh, outline a perfect circle and it just looks quite clean. However, sometimes it's a bit hard uh, if the surface of the skull is not flat. Uh, it's hard to feel when you're almost uh, there. So it might be good to use a dental drill as well. Uh, I usually use a combination. I start with the biopsy pen and then I use a dental drill to finish it. Um, very important thing is to properly close up the cranial to me when you're not recording. So immediately after surgery, but also ev after every recording you're doing, uh, we use three different uh, strategies all at the same time. Uh, Duragel is, uh, is, is kind of a gel-like uh, structure which protects the dura, uh, but it's because it's gel-like, it's also very easy for the mouse to wash it off. So you want to also uh, put some quick cast silicon sealants. This also seals off the craniotomy from anything, dust or uh, anything you don't want to have in your craniotomy. And we, on top of that, also have the plastic cap. Might help uh, with a health craniotomy or to not remove the dura unless you're putting something back in to prevent dura grow, regrow. But if you don't do that uh, and you remove the dura, it might just regrow and be thicker. Uh, you can also sharpen the probe, or actually it's very recommended to sharpen the probe. Uh, you should probably record as soon as possible after you did the craniotomy and make sure you do not let the brain dry out. Uh, many people use saline or ACSF uh, during the recording so that the tissue doesn't get dried out. Uh, I personally now use Duragel from the start of the recording and I insert the probe through the Duragel. Um, the upside is that it never dries or it never evaporates. So you don't have the problem of the brain drying out. The downside is that it tends to stick to the Neuropixels probe. So you need to clean a lot more. Uh, here's an example experimental setup. Uh, we already covered this by Julie, but just uh, the other things I wanted to mention is that it's very useful to have a stereoscope or a microscope. Then we have, uh, we use the Sensopec manipulators uh, on a magnetic torlapse base so that we're flexible in moving it around. Uh, a dedicated rig for animal experiments, including an air, are quite essential. Uh, and you need to have the probes ready to record with. And uh, Sylvia Schreuder's presentation from the 2020 course is a bit more in detail on what that means. But in short, uh, you want to connect the ground and reference most of the times and solder a grounding wire to that. Uh, and at least in the past, we needed to always uh, then cement this to a dovetail cap, which then goes on a rod that you can plug into your manipulator. Uh, but more detailed procedures are uh, to be found on older courses and on the website. Uh, sharpening is also recommended to do. It feels very scary at first, but uh, it's actually not that bad if you start doing it and it helps a lot with inserting the probes. So we use a micro grinder and here you can see from an image by Carolina that it's uh, initially, it's uh, really kind of blunt. And then uh, after the sharpening process, uh, it's it has a nice pointy tip. Just before every recording, you wanna do a few steps. So first of all, you wanna uh, label your probe tips with some fluorescent dye. Uh, this way you can find the probe tracks back in the brain later during histology. Um, you can either just dip the probe tip carefully in the dye, uh, preferably not by hand, but with some tool is probably better. Uh, you can also use uh, a, a pipettes to carefully uh, dip some, leave some uh, dye on the tip. Uh, I really use, like to have this real system in place, and that is because it means you can Prepare all your neuropixels probe. Well, this is an extreme situation by next time. I only use two, but even then it's nice if you have the two you are going to record with hanging there before you put the mouse in the rig. And this way you can basically slide the mouse under the recording probes when you're ready to go. Some pre-recording checks. Uh, have your planned trajectories with you. Use a projector and an inclinometer to uh, make sure you have the azimuth and elevation angles right test that you can have because you didn't test it. Um, you wanna uh, check the software, are the probes properly detected? You wanna select which channels to record from, this has been shown uh, previously, and whether it's properly grounded. Then uh, when you're done with all the checks, you can bring the mouse in with the craniotomy there, uh, and you can move the probes close to the craniotomy. Uh, you 
first zero depth it when you touch the bird. Uh, please avoid any blood vessels because it's just better to avoid them. And once you can go in, you just insert the probes very slowly at a speed from five to 10 micron, a micrometer per second. And you can know that you're in the brain by watching the so signal. In this case, we use Spike GLX signal, uh, software. And you can just see that at some point the signal changes and you see spikes appearing. And that's when you know you're in the brain. Um, if you're deep enough, based on your trajectory planner, you have to wait a few minutes before starting the recording so that you allow the brain to settle. Um, yeah, so I will skip this because I'm already running late, but uh, it has been discussed. You have to select which probes you want, uh, which channels you want to record from. Uh, this is a view of Spike GLX, what it looks like when you record, and this from OpenEFIS. After the recording, you have to retract the probes. Uh, as soon as you can, take care of your mice, make sure that they're okay, cover the craniotomy with the three things I just discussed, and free them from head fixation. And uh, then you can take care of the probe. So it's good to wash it with Tergazyme first, which uh, degrades the biological tissue that is stuck to the probe. Um, then there's some, uh, we usually use dionized water or isopropanol alcohol to rinse it. And like I said, sometimes the dirt gel sticks to the probe and we use silicon cleaner for this. Uh, there's a few common problems. Uh, one of them is insertion is not going as planned because for example, the probe bends. This is very scary at first when this happens, just slowly go back up a little bit and try somewhere else or try again. Sometimes with a slightly higher speeds, uh, that might help. Uh, if you see something like this, it means your probe is not grounded properly. Make sure to ground the mouse. And uh, like uh, I think this was already discussed by Carolina, so I don't have to go over this. Um, but yeah, just keep uh, checking the grounding. I don't have time anymore, but there are some common problems and common solutions. Uh, feel free to read through them. The slides will be online. And uh, there will be a lecture also, I think, on this later. But after all your recordings are done, you basically perfuse the mouse, extract the brain, and you find back where your recordings were done by looking at where the the, the probe tracks are. Um, yeah, this was it. The resources are also here, but also these will be online. I think that was it for me.